Correct. Now, experts have warned that South Africans are at higher risk of skin cancer, which affects people of all ages and all races. One of the reasons for this is high levels of ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Um, I'm probably not best placed to tell you what exactly that means. Let's bring in general practitioner, Dr. Donny Fick, who joins us here in studio. It's great to see you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. And the national manager of the uh, health programs of cancer, Lorraine Govender. She joins us via Zoom for more on this topic. To both of our guests, um, thank you once again. Uh, Donny, I want to begin with you um, as the resident GP with us today. And in fact, you chose this. You ran the Two Oceans Half Marathon yes. just a few weeks ago. And you chose skin cancer as your um, sort of motivation. Y you chose this platform to raise awareness around skin cancer. Why? I think, lot, I think South Africa has the highest participant numbers in terms of running. Running is a very big social sport in South Africa. I read an interesting fact the other day that since COVID, 28% more South Africans actually run now than they did pre-COVID. There's also a very interesting coincidental fact that happens on the side that in the same period of time, South Africa has overtaken Australia as skin cancer capital of wow. the world. Is that coincidence? Maybe a little, but there is enough coincidence there to be like, we are spending more time in the sun. Runners spend five to six hours in the sun. We focus on shoes, nutrition, but we never focus on protecting ourselves from the sun. Very few runners use sunscreen. Very few runners wear hats. I mean, yeah. it's nothing, but we're going to run for six hours at a time without the protection. So we thought... With the increased incidence of skin cancer, we really need to educate runners and hopefully the rest of the population about the damaging effects of the sun. Yeah. Lorraine, you know, I'm, I'm very interested to unpack this issue around uh, numbers. I mean, are we, you know, are, are we seeing a higher incidence of skin cancer in South Africa? And, and I wonder whether this is because we're really good at reporting. Are other countries reporting as well as we usually do around these issues? Yeah, so uh, the answer to that is yes, skin cancer is uh, among the top five cancers in our country. And if we look at melanoma in particular, it is now featuring among the top five cancers among females. Hmm. And it wasn't among the top five previously. And this is the latest uh, National Cancer Registry, which records uh, the statistics uh, that are sent through to them via the labs. So in terms of your other question, uh, yes, there is still late diagnosis, and not all of our uh, patients are actually go into hospitals to have themselves checked. And this is also because when we think of skin cancer, we always mostly think skin cancer is most common among the people of light skin. But on the other hand, I'm sure, Doctor, you've also experienced that, that dark skin people also get skin cancer. And often this is not picked up early yeah. uh, and it's late diagnosis. And some of them would die without even having had the diagnosis made. So, you know, there is that misperception among the public. Dr. Fick, are you finding that, that, you know, there is this notion that people with darker skin think that they have um, more protection from the sun? And in many ways, that is true. There is, there is truth in that statement. You do the, the darker your skin tone or the higher the Fitzpatrick skin type is what we like to call it in medicine, the more protection you do have. But it doesn't make you bulletproof. So mm. there's always people that fall through those cracks. I mean, I had a good friend who I saw in his 40s that just came to see me because he lost weight. And eventually we found out that he had metastatic lung cancer from a melanoma and his deterioration was quite quick he was a darker skin person so yes wow. we're not bulletproof yeah, by yeah this absolutely. at all and and actually um you know that was my next question as well it's on my list of questions lorraine um the progression of of skin cancer and clearly from what you've just said dr fick it can move from skin cancer to the rest of your body as well which i don't think is a very well-known yeah. fact Definitely. Um, you know, there, there are different stages in terms of melanoma and skin cancer as well. And it can, uh, as doctors just mentioned, uh, you know, can progress into other um, areas in your body. So, yeah, I, I think we, we, we must zone in in terms of uh, the dark skin people. And, you know, what, Michelle, what I wanted to also say is when we think of skin cancer, we always think, oh, you know, it's our face and, mm. you know, those sort of areas. But in the dark skin people, you find the, scan, the, the melanoma, it's usually, you know, your limbs and your feet. It's, it's areas that you don't think about. And often when you also think about skin cancer, you think, oh, maybe when I'm older. But we're actually finding people, people younger than 40 
that are also um, having um, a risk of having melanoma and skin cancer. We've had survivors that are young people, um, you know, with living with, uh, through melanoma and skin cancer. So shall we, I've got a list here in front of me of um, questions that your dermatologist will ask you. Um, and it's A, B, C, D, E for, for, for various reasons. But without giving us the ABCs of it, what am I looking for insofar as an early diagnosis is concerned? So we tell people to go, to check, to go for general checkups quite often. If you've got a family history of skin cancer, if you are fairer skinned, if you have a lot of moles on your body, these are all risk factors that could make it more serious. If you spend a lot of time in the sun, either recreationally or occupationally, all of these things put you at risk and then you should get things checked out. And I always say, if you've got a mole that you're worried about, that's worrisome already and you yeah. should go have it yeah. checked out. And then it comes down to the A, B, C, D, E's. If a mole is asymmetrical, if the borders are irregular, if there's not the same color throughout the mole, or if it's changing or if there's evolution, then you should have it checked out. Yeah, I, I mean, I imagine that, um, Lorraine, you know, part of perhaps the reason that people don't have these checks as regularly as, as we should um, is a cost factor. It's an issue of the majority of South Africans not having easy access to, to primary health care. Um, yes, and it's definitely, um, the, the other thing is, um, you know, when we talk about, it's, it's also a cancer doctor, I'm sure you'll agree, people don't talk about it. Uh, people don't think, you know, that it's a common cancer because all the other cancers, example, breast cancer, you know, everyone, we, people often think the only cancer that you have in this world is breast cancer. Mm -hmm. People think that as well. And when we talk about breast cancer, we always talk about, you know, doing self-breast examinations. And similarly to skin cancer, we also advocate that, you know, check your spots. Mm. Um, you know, it doesn't cost you a lot uh, to check your body, look out for the spots, look out for the changes that doctors mentioned, get your spouse or family member, if you've got something, to have that check, you know, the, your back, uh, your areas that you can't see, you can ask someone else to have a look at it. And I think, you know, th that's uh, the start of it. And yes, it is um, a highly treatable cancer. We are lucky in our country, uh, you know, that we have good um, sort of treatment protocols in the public sector um, and good dermatologists and doctors that are out there to mm. help the patients. So we do, we do have good cover in our country as well, both in the public and private sector. Yeah. Um, but it's also our responsibility to go and ask for help when we need it. Yeah. Do you want to respond to that? I was also about to say, it's also a highly, we're missing a big trick here, it's also a highly preventable cancer. If you went to every woman and said there was something that you could use every day that would present, prevent you from getting breast cancer, everyone would take it. We have something out there that prevents skin cancer or reduces your risk at mm, least. Mm. And that's daily sunscreen or daily photo protection. And okay. if that's not affordable, then there's hats, covering up, staying out of the sun, seeking shade, all these other tips and tricks that we can use because these things, the risk increases the more time you spend in the sun. So if mm. you can protect yourself from the sun with various modalities, you can definitely reduce your risk and prevent this. So, so it's, I'm glad you brought up that issue of sunscreen because if you've gone to any store, you will see the cost of sunscreen. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculously priced. I'm not sure if there's a particular reason why sunscreen is that expensive. Um, you talk about limiting your risk by doing things like wearing hats, wearing sunscreen. Yeah. But of course, there's a large portion of the population that can't limit their risk. Farm workers come to mind. It's their jobs to be yes. out in the sun every day. And I was, I was chatting to someone earlier today, like if you work in a mine, there's certain precautions you take when you go underground. You wear a hard hat, you wear safety shoes. And I think people that employ people that work in the sun all the time need to do that as well. Like umbrellas, hats, shade. I mean, if sunscreen is inaccessible, then there are other forms like cover up, work outside of the, the peak sunscreen, yeah. sun yeah. times, like during the middle of the day, seek shade. All of these things yeah. definitely help. I did speak to a manufacturer of sunscreen in the country and asked them why the cost is the way it is. And I think it's the filters that get used, the research and development is what they told me. And to make sunscreens waterproof, tear resistant, sweat resistant, all takes a large part of their budget. So that's why those costs are the way they are. I mean, Lorraine, is this something that the Cancer Association of South Africa um, has ever discussed, has ever um, sort of lobbied for, for certain industries to carry a lot more responsibility insofar as their workers are concerned? 
Definitely. Uh, so we do a lot of education and awareness with, uh, in farms and with farm workers, and we, we do see a, a, a leaning towards wearing protective clothing like your hats and, uh, you know, wide brim hats as well. Mm. We see that, and they are aware of that. Um, in terms of sunscreen, again, doctors just mentioned the high cost. The Cancer Association, you know, we also, Doc, you have to be mindful of uh, – the fake ones in the market mm. that uh, say that it will protect you and it doesn't. And we've gone the extra mile to actually test some of them and they carry the cancer seal of recognition means that our laboratories have checked them and they're safe to use and they will definitely do what they say they will do. So those are some of the important factors. But also, um, Michelle, in terms of uh, people living with albinism, we have really worked hard with the department and have lobbied to ensure that people living with albinism actually have sunscreen to use from the department, uh, you know, in the, in, as part of the daily use. So, so we have done a lot. And then again, um, Doc, you spoke about, spoken about uh, prevention methods. Uh, tanning is also something that mm. people use. We all want to look beautiful and we want to have that beautiful glow and color. And tanning beds is definitely out of the question. And at the, the Cancer Association, we definitely say this is a no-go zone. Mm. So people need to know that you may want to look good, but in the long run, it can definitely have a predisposition to yeah. skin cancer. Yeah, absolutely. So, so tanning, tanning beds, beds are the worst. and also just laying out in the sun and, and basking, yeah, which I think that is looking many for of trouble, us right? like, like to do. I mean, I remember pictures of the early 90s where it was glamorized to be have the golden toned skin. And over time, you've seen people on the beach now totally covered up with yeah. like long sleeves, wide brim hats. We have to protect ourselves from the sun and don't go looking for trouble. Don't go bask in the sun for hours and don't, don't get into a tanning bed. You know, there's a whole portion of, I mean, if I think about um, when I was growing up, it's a very long time ago, <laughs> um, uh, it's not like sunscreen was a part of our daily lives. No. Um, for example, going to primary school, going to high school, um, I certainly don't remember applying sunscreen um, in my youth, uh, whereas it's something now yeah. that I think many parents and guardians are, are quite focused on. Yeah. You know, the kids are playing cricket, they're playing soccer. They're out there, they're wearing sunscreen. So there's this whole portion um, of the population, sort of, I don't want to say our age <laughs> and make any assumptions, Lorraine, but there is this older portion of the population that doesn't take it seriously enough. Um, if we think of, well, they do perhaps for their children, but they didn't grow up with this notion of um, taking care of yourself and protecting yourself from, from the sun, right? Yeah, but I think we must also realize the climate changes. We we are living it. We see it every single day. You know, the climate that we had back then um, is not the climate that we have mm. right now, right, Doc? Mm. So, so people need to be mindful and not only think about the effects in other ways, but think about what effect it has on you as an individual and your skin. Yeah. So that's something that we, we need to take cognizance of when we think about skin cancer, that Climate changes affect us in, in many other ways, not just about, you know, our crops and uh, loss of water mm. and all of those things, but the skin changes as well. Our exposure to the ultraviolet rays, rays are all important factors that we need to take into cognizance now. And then also you find that the younger generation, although you speak about the older people, the younger generation often with a lot of the risky behaviors that they indulge in, they don't think of the impact that it will have on them later. Mm -hmm. They don't think of it. They say, now it's time to enjoy and we want to be out there and look cool and everything and not wear my hat. So use sunscreen. And, you know, we have, I'm, I'm a mother and I know it's, it's always trying to get my child to wear the sunscreen every day. Isn't it? But, mm -hmm. um, and also people who are driving, you know, ensure that you have sunscreen. It's not only about being out there in the sun, but remember the refractive lay, rays also can affect you. So ensuring that you wear protective clothing is important while you're driving, you know, your sleeves that you can use to protect. So, you know, people can contact the Cancer Association if yeah. they need more information on how to be protected. Listen, even I'm surprised that I need to be aware of wearing sunscreen yeah. while I'm driving in my car with my tinted windows. Because UVA, so you know, we can break it down, like there's UVA and UVB. UVA rays goes through clouds, through windows. So even on a cloudy overcast day, you're still exposed to UVA rays. And those are the more damaging ones when it comes to aging, hyperpigmentation, and wow. cancer. And a population group that's really bad at this is men. Mm. Men don't believe they should wear sunscreen. You speak to any man, you're like, do you wear or sunscreen? Or at all. Yeah, or creams at all. And they're like, <laughs> maybe once when I went to the beach, or maybe once when I went to the rugby, and they'll 
they'll never use it, so we want to appeal to them to please daily photo protection or mm. daily sunscreen is very important. I mean, it, it really just sounds to me, just from our discussion, that we need a lot more education 100%. around um, skin cancer specifically. Um, as, as you said, Lorraine, you know, when we talk about breast cancer, uh, prostate cancer even, yeah. we might even be able to rattle off those, those statistics, right? But, but not with skin cancer. And I read an interesting fact the other day that the most common cancer in Europe now is skin cancer. Hmm. So it's not breast, it's overtaken breast and prostate. And I think they've got a lot of exposure over time with education and well deserved. But I think now it's time that we focus on skin yeah. cancers as well. So uh, Dr. Fick, when you and I were talking uh, in preparation for this interview, um, just on a, on, a, on a much, much lighter note, <laughs> um, as serious as skin cancer is. Um, but if you, you, you said to me that if you start wearing sunscreen at a relatively young age, you mentioned the number, yeah. um, you can actually minimize your need, in quotation marks, <laughs> for things like Botox. 100%. Like, there's anecdotal evidence that says, like, if you were used sunscreen from a very early age, like from the age of 10, you might never need Botox in your life. And I suppose people spend thousands of rands on Botox, get rid of wrinkles. <laughs> we're chatting in a makeup room, people want to use retinols and serums and Botox. I'm like, just use sunscreen. Yeah. Start there, and that will definitely slow down the aging process. And you might need a few things after that, but don't use these expensive products if you're not using sunscreen. Listen, um, it might be too late for some of us, Lorraine. I'm going to embrace my smile lines for now. But yeah, shall we end the conversation off on this issue of anti-aging and why sunscreen is important yeah. for making us stay young, helping us stay and, and looking young. Definitely, it should be part of our beauty regime. Yeah. But also to, to just say to the viewers out there that, you know, it's just not only about your sunscreen and your risk factors. Remember, the genetic predisposition as well is extremely important. So if you have a family member who's had skin cancer or any cancer for that matter, uh, it's important. And especially if you look at melanoma, you know, I really want to stress to the viewers if you go and look at the National Cancer Registry, melanoma is among the top five cancers. Wow. And melanoma is, a, you know, a metastatic cancer as a result of having um, skin cancer. So please, um, it is serious and it's not getting any better because of the way our climate is. And we need to ensure that we take the necessary precautions to take care of ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. To both of our guests, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. Lorraine Govender is the National Manager of health programs at the Cancer Association of South Africa, C-A-N-S-A. -S -S you can head on over to their website if you want to find out any other information about the risks of skin cancer. And of course, Dr. Donifek is a GP helping us understand the numbers. Thank you so much for coming into studio.